again, you always got to look at the downside of anything. You know, anything that looks cool, there's some kind of a downside <laughs> to it. <laughs> you know, it looks good, but there's got to be some kind of a weakness to it, right? I mean, we hope that's true, right? Because the attacker is doing good stuff. Attackers aren't going to come in, you know, and try and punch you with their chin and, uh, you know, rub their heel on you. No, they're coming in with stuff they know is going to work and that they've had success with, probably. Knocked out enough people by doing this, boom, you go over there, there's this collapsing of the cheek against the neck, and when it runs out of neck, it, you know, gives this concussion up through the head and the person's dazed. They've had experience with this and they know it works. What's the downside of it? So we need to look at that with our stuff as well. I remember one time I had two, uh, two different responses to this. We were teaching the defenses against our techniques. One guy was very upset because he didn't want to study a martial art where the techniques could be countered. <laughs> <laughs> well, go out into dreamland, all right? And when, when you find that guy who can teach that, I mean, I've heard stories of people who were gunshot and stayed in the fight. I mean, come on, if, if you can't even rely on a gunshot uh, a little wrist twist or uh, bending somebody's finger uh, also is going to be s kind of suspect, huh? <laughs> no, it's the timing and the context and your ability to make this stuff happen that makes the technique work. The other guy responded differently. He was looking at this and he was just kind of over there sort of frozen looking at this and wasn't enjoying himself. I said, you know, what's, what seems to be the problem? He goes, the stuff that you're showing us how to defeat? I said, yeah. He said, my old teacher used to tell me that there's no way that could be defeated. <laughs> I said, well, bring him to the seminar next time. <laughs> I didn't say that. I was a little more sympathetic. But no, that, the guy thought that was it. Anything can be beaten. Gunshot to the body can be beaten with the right kind of mental attitude and the right kind of timing and the right sort of. That's the scary thing and the wonderful thing. OK, so let's look at some of this here in terms of how this might work more effectively. John's here. Um, as I've hit him with this first one. At this point, as I get ready to throw this, both hands, I'm trying to do it slow motion, both hands are going to go out as I throw that. Remember I had mentioned earlier that I want that thing to clear me on the way back. From here, as I get ready to throw this, this hand is out. This also acts like a gun sight. So I know, see if I'm doing this kind of stuff, don't even move. And I throw it like that, all right? Wrong guy got tied up. If I keep this base, let's say it's like a gunshot, this goes in here, boom, the right guy gets hit with that. So I'm using that. He doesn't know it. Gee, this happens in an eighth of a second, right? So I'm here. So push this hand out. Hit with it from there. From here, pushing that hand out. So make sure this is out there. All right, this is out here. Don't throw it from here. Like this, this is where it comes back and gets you, OK? So if you can create that habit. The other thing, too, is it will make sure this person is trying to fight me, especially if, yeah, it makes sure that my distance is correct here, right? Because I can do a lot just with my distancing if I don't get suckered into boxing match range here, where all of a sudden, boom, he's got me, boom, he's got me, and I'm wondering, well, when was the fight going to start? Okay, so, no, no. So <laughs> use taijutsu range. Boom, throw it way out there. I've got it out there, out there with this. Boom, hits from there. All right, so you're less likely to have this come back and get you that way. OK, try it a couple. This takes a lot of room, so good luck. I'm hitting, clearing it. I've got my gun sight up here. And I'm either backing away as I throw that in, or from here, I may actually be chasing them as I throw that in. I pull back this way, because you see now my hand's already wound up. If you're watching this video later on, this is not the way to do it. I'm just showing you how it could be done, but not very effectively. I've hit them there. I come back with something like this, then I have to pull my hand up to throw it and they see what's coming in or I have to whip it around there. They see what's coming in, they can duck, even if it hits them, it skitters off and it's not going to knock them out of the fight. Then I get uh, where this chain is over here and I do something like this where, again, if I have to bring my hand up, there's one more thing I have to do, one more tip I've given them as to what's coming next, which I don't want to do. If I've hit this individual, this has come over here, I want to pull this back and from here I'm right ready to go back in and here I am. All right? So be aware, uh, be aware of that. All right? Your setup is all set to go. All, right? all set to go from there. Um, 
We're going to go into a, a grappling thing, but again, make note of that. It's important. The other thing, too, I'll warn you on these tools, it's a good habit to get in always checking them, right? especially in the training hall, because right? I've, I've seen these rings where they start to pull apart a little bit, and all of a sudden you're throwing them out, and the weapon comes apart. Okay, so you can do it visually or just again checking it this way so you make sure. It's a tragic thing that happened in uh, Japan about eight years ago. I read this in the newspaper. Guy was doing EI, sword drawing, and uh, you know, very formal school, and everybody was in there. And believe it or not, this guy comes leaping up with this sword, pulls the sword out of the scabbard, and looks, and he's only got the handle. There's the blade way over there right through the heart of a 12-year-old boy. I mean, just, you know, boom, right? There's this little bamboo pin that's supposed to be in there, you know? This little mekugi, and it had fallen out, and the man didn't check it before he did his draw. They, he went to prison. I mean, it was clearly an accident, but they, they sent him to prison, which in Japan is amazing. But, uh, so always check it out. Okay, so thus endeth the sermon here. But anyway, be careful when you're working with each other on that. Check those things out so you don't have that happen. Or in the fight that you don't go to pull it out and you've only got half the weapon. Let's look at our next uh, step here, uh, John, if we're working together. Uh, I'm not going to have you go through the whole thing, but I'll show you the fight. Oh, he's coming and starts to move in on me. Bang, I want to hit him here. Bang, I've got him here. Bang, I've got it. Oh, now he's, st he's still in the fight. Uh oh, he's got me here, and he's going to start to pound on me with his fist or whatever. This isn't going to do me much good at this point here, all right? It just goes down with me. So we're going to start to move in. I'm not going to have you do that whole thing, but just imagine that that has happened. And now you're in a position where you've got this both ends of the chain held in close to your body, and this person's just closing in on you real fast. Either grab a hold and slug, or this might have even been a, a fist in, it, in and of itself. Knock you out as he comes in with that. We'll let you practice either one. As he does come in with that, I start out close here. I want to attack him with my elbow, and then using this as to attack the, uh, the other arm. Okay, so from here, as that's coming in, attacking in there, he goes to counter. I want to move with where that punch was going to where I can then get him in a control position here, okay? As this comes in, I'm moving offline. See where his grab is going? As that happens, I'm moving offline. I am attacking him here, all right? But I don't want him to bounce back where he can come in and get me, so I'm hugging this arm at the same time. And then this gets caught. Oh, okay. That's where it is, so I'm using this to my advantage. Now, he's not going to stop fighting at this point, so as he goes to hit, I can use this elbow to keep him jammed, if you just punch me from there. To where, yeah, that timing, but I'm not going to rely on that, <laughs> okay? So as he punches from there, I just go with it, and this chain, I tie onto my own arm. Tie onto my own arm. Well, what if uh, you need to get out of there? I can easily let go and be gone, okay? So I'm in control of that. Timing is important. Here's how not to do it. <laughs> okay? <laughs> Here's another way not to do it. Wrap this and get him in an onikudaki. Meanwhile, he's pounding the side of my head with his left fist. Okay? And here's another way not to do it. Hit, move over here, and then wrestle him to the ground. I end up going to the ground, okay? So there's all how not to do it's in there. So now that nobody's gonna do that, and we know that, all right? As I'm hitting here, I'm, my movement is what takes him to the ground. I've got it in, in single hand here. So I can stretch him out. He'd still be kicking and scrambling or whatever. See how his head went right into my knee on there, to where I'm gonna use that. I don't even need to grab the hand at this point. Just jerk back here. Oh, beat him to death with my mind. <laughs> <laughs> tool, and I'm here. He elbows me here, but I'm pretty tough. I'm pretty tough. Pretty tough guy here. And as this starts to come in here, I just pull my arm back to get it out of there. That might happen. You could imagine that. If I'm here, you're attacking. And I could, at that point, you just start to pull your arm back. You know, it's possible he might get out of there. And we'll, we'll look at that. That's a possibility. Okay. I'm in here. I get to about here. He just tightens his arm up. You know, now I've got strength against strength. That's another thing that might happen. Now, it's going to happen if my timing is off. Because the only way, see if you can follow me on this, the only way he's going to 
know how to respond is if he knows what I'm doing ahead of time, right? So if my timing's a little off, I'm here, and when you feel, yeah, when he feels that starting to lift him up, that's the way he's going to respond. He's going to tighten up and pull me down. Or if it's a little dog, now I'm forcing him back, and if I'm, my timing, he'll do that, and now he's got the weapon, and I'm here. So we've got to examine how these things could fall apart, because this is where the real growth, the real learning comes from, on it. So let's take a look at a couple of ways that you can short circuit some of this stuff here. Because John comes in here, boom, I end up here. And let's say at this point, he just tightens up against me. At this point, he's going down, I go down even more. Okay, that's going to be my way of handling the, the strain, pin him. And you might want to try it wrong. Here's wrong. He goes, he, I, I go up. When I go up against his string, <laughs> that's when I'm ultimately going to go down. So I might as well go down in the first place. Give myself a little effort. We're in here, and as he starts to tighten up, if I go on down, I can use his tightness against him. So yeah, but what if he goes even further down when you go down, because he went down. <laughs> so I'm here, I start down, and John drops way, way down, way, way down. Great. <laughs> now you got him on the floor. <laughs> Throw him. Okay, so it's, eventually he'll create his own trap. So what you can do, once you get in here, in fact, let the person get this on and start to pull it down and then tighten it and see what we can, see what we can show on that. Okay? So wait. Now don't get into a contest because you can end up damaging your body. Just enough so that it feels like you'd have to move on to something. This technique isn't working. Again, I'm here. It's a minimal action. I'm not having to wrap this around his arm or anything. I want to time in the fight. We're here, and just by turning this straight line in space, I've got him locked up. I don't have to do this to hold him in place. Anywhere this hand goes to get out of there, I'll just take it anywhere to get out of there. I've ultimately got him tied up with my technique. And when I need to get out of there, I just let go and comes with me, and I can continue on from it. So don't think you have to get them with a square knot or anything like that on there. So let's try that. A little bit of resistance. And one of the tricks as you go down is to really pull on this part of the chain. Pull on this part. It just gives you more leverage. Here. If you end up here, like this, in here real small, now it's strictly who's stronger. Wrestling around like this, and meanwhile, he's going to remember he's got a left hand and punch me in the ribs or head, that too. Right. So we can't hang around it. I can't do this. Use my leverage, use the chain for your benefit there. Pull it way out and go down. We're going to do the what if they pull their hand out next, but right now, let me have you do that what if. Try it. Set it up a couple times where you've really got to pull down on this chain to pull them all the way off balance. Okay, just a couple times, come on back, we'll look at the, uh, the others. In learning this, any given technique, uh, there are a bunch of phases that you're going to go through. And in a seminar like this, we're just pumping this stuff out real fast. and uh, It's kind of hard to break it down. So on your own, later on, look at this. First phase you, is what I call the mechanical training. You've got to know what, it is, what is going on here. So John and I are working here. And he comes in with this technique. I come in and grab his hand here. Already, this is not the technique I did. Why not? I left the hit out. I hit him, that kind of takes a little of the fight out of him, and it also forces the upper part of his body back. So mechanically, I'm doing a different technique. He comes in here, and I just grab his arm this way here. Can you see how he's in perfect, solid balance? Okay, so now I got more on my hands in this fight. Might happen that way in the fight. Or out here a little bit. Yeah. Grab comes in, and whoa, I'm here, and he's in perfect balance. He goes to hit me, whoa, as he goes to hit. I have to get away from there so you can still do something. It's just a different technique. So mechanically, you got to remember all those things that were in there. Slow motion. Not only do I hit him, but I hit him off his point of balance, and then I close in. Do you see that little footwork where I close in to make sure he stays in his position of off balance? He doesn't like that. He wants to come back up to balance and hit me, all right? And I know that because he's human and I've, uh, I feel the same way, all right? So I'm here, boom, as he comes back up to get me. That's my moment 
of moving behind him, so I'm not having to wrestle with a guy that's so much stronger than me. So that's that's mechanics. Okay, it's like robots. You know, Disney World ninja rides. <laughs> here comes this arm. I got him here, up here. You know, that's the mechanics. Some people are very happy with that. They go, okay, let's see number two. Whoa, it's just the mechanics. It's not enough. That wouldn't win a fight for you. Okay. Next, after the mechanics, is what I call the application. It's the little adjustments you make as you go through this so that it's going to work. Okay, so as John's coming in here, mechanics, I'm in here, and then I'm going to adjust with these little things here. And then based on where I feel his resistance, see, I might move in towards him to make him go down. All right, because I felt that would what would throw him off balance. Um, punch comes in again. I'm inside here. I get to this point. Uh, uh I, I wouldn't dare move into him. Okay, he's got stability. I move out from him. So this is called application. You know the mechanics well enough that you can kind of adjust how they happen in there. And there's a gray, fuzzy area between the two. You can't say, okay, I'm done with mechanics. Now let's do application. You're learning all of those at the same time. The third one and see about your own background in the martial arts, see if you agree with me on this. This is one I think is most consistently left out of martial art training, as I had experienced it for years and years. This is one, I've made up the term staging, all right? Just like in theater, where the way they put everything on the stage and where the people are and their postures gets a, an idea across to you in the audience. And what I mean by that is in the fight, how is the technique being called up? What's going on that makes me know this is the right thing to do? Okay. If John's up here, got his shoulders higher, and his hands in here like this, like a street boxer, and they're kind of moving and wiggling around. Now for me to hear, wait for him to throw that punch. <laughs> this is improper staging, okay? <laughs> we were doing Iago, and he was doing Once Around the Park. Okay, wrong, <laughs> wrong agreement as to what was going on. That wouldn't be the right technique to do, would it? Now, if he's just coming flying at me, grabbing a hole, rah, bang, this is the proper staging. Now we're into an agreement on what's going on with this. I'm here, and he's got that little uh, jabby kind of thing. <laughs> just hit him here with this. Right? <laughs> Pound on him with this iron piece and get to where that other one can't come. So I hit him here, and then when he hits me with this other one, out of anger, I can hit it. We're back to the first technique we did. Okay. Now, if he's doing this great big bulldog tackle thing, that I'm, and I'm trying to hit him in the hand with this little weight. <laughs> <laughs> Not going to work. Proper, that's what I mean by proper staging. This is the hardest thing to teach, because you just have to do it a whole lot with a lot of different people in your training partner, uh, training partners in your training hall. So you practice making up your mind as you go along, whether it's punching, kicking, grabbing, chain things, or whatever. You just have to do it a whole lot. Do it a whole lot in order to get that. Okay, let's, uh, let's go on from here. Um, same kind of a situation where this comes in here. Yeah, I've hit here. I'm starting to take this over. And at this point, John just rips his arm way back from there ah, to where I'm caught out in the air and there's nothing there. So I'm here. As I start to do this take that, this comes over. Nothing there. Nothing there. In fact, he's now all set up where if you grab with that, he could get me in some kind of a arm bar and me and my chain down for the count there. Right? Can you imagine that happening in the fight? I'm here, I've hit him, I start to come in here, this just goes, whoa, all of a sudden, boom, I get caught that way. Anybody imagine that happening in the fight? Okay, you gotta, you gotta believe in it, otherwise you're not gonna be interested in seeing the cure for it. Okay, so again, we think about how the attacker is going with that. I'm here, we'll do it the same way. Bang, I start in here, and as this elbow pulls away, I'm caught in the air here. He's starting to set me up. Well, I let him set me up okay. at that point, and from here, I've got my throw set up. Okay, so I'm in here, I start this takedown. Whoa, he's backing up. Just leave him there, put it over the back of the head. This way, if you can straighten it out, just like a hondo, that works, and just run and walk down. There you go. Now, you got to be careful how you resist okay, as the training partner on this. 
because you're going to have all of this impact hitting behind your neck with this skinny little thing. So don't, my suggestion is don't resist too much on this. Don't fight against it or you'll find out why this works so well. And the fight, as he starts to tense up, I just throw myself to the floor and at the last minute pull back this way to get that whipping action. And if he's still in the fight, comes up to get me from there. We've got this hit, or you can pin him down into position with this. Okay, let's do it one more time, and then we'll let you carefully practice with someone you really trust. <laughs> this part was the same. When you get to here and that hand is gone, ooh, you're all of a sudden exposed here. This is what gets me out of the arm bar. Let's switch over here. See, he's getting me barred here this way. By dropping my shoulder, I'm out of the arm bar. That's what lets me put it over his head if I do it at the same time. Straighten it out, turn it into a hondo. And down the person goes. So you're using this movement on this uh, vertical plane. And again, be very careful. My suggestion when you're being thrown, and we'll let you do this, do what John did. Do you notice how from here, at this point, when I start to pull down, he goes ahead and bends his knees. Bend your knees, crouch, so you can roll out easily. Oh, for safety and training, Stephen? No, no, no. I'm going to get you in this on the street, and you'll know how to roll out of it if you have to. They may not have, you know, a couple of uh, earplugs on a uh, ski rope. Or maybe they're a wrestler. Yeah. And they got you here, and they're going to throw you by the hair of the neck. And as you get thrown, because you're already moving. Just bend your knees, boom. And you can end up catching this guy here. Okay? So we're always simultaneously practicing, setting up for what if we have to reverse the defense against the counter, against that technique. I guess you're always practicing all that too. Okay, everybody got what we're gonna do on this? Catch him around the neck, boom, pop him. <coughs> Accommodate, do it easy for this uh, throw out there. Get a training partner, piece of rope, some room, all right, and we'll try this one out. We've tried all this stuff, and what ends up is he's grabbed this out of the air. So now here we are in a tug of war. Me in a tug of war with a guy who's bigger and stronger than me, who started the fight in the first place. Uh, it's kind of bad odds here, okay? All right. So from here, I want to use this as a way to capture him and break him up. <coughs> so let's see what happens in this fight. As he grabs here, I don't want to wrestle around, so I hit my own tool, move him out, kick here, and then he's still got a hold of this weapon. That's what allows me to get him into this arm bar situation here. Kicking one way or another, this leg out and let him fall right on his tailbone. In fact, I help him right on the tailbone, and then right onto the back of the head here. I've got my tool at this point. Here's what you don't want to do, is try and engage him here with something, because right? he's bigger and stronger. So if he's got a hold of that, and I hit here, the rest will move. Kicking, just so that he's not going to jump on me. Right? Now I can move his body <coughs> by moving my training tool here grab him by the belt at the top of the blue jeans back here. Kick from there. Common question is, what if when you hit this, he lets go? That was the whole point. <laughs> <laughs> but if he doesn't let go, okay, we're back at the beginning. If he doesn't let go, use this, okay? <coughs> then as you way, <laughs> break up his uh, bone structure there. And so you're guiding the person away by hitting your own. Super slow, then I'll let you do it, and then we'll have a break. Hitting here. Back over again. Pull on this arm. Now he's here. Oh, he's going to hit me with his other free elbow. I go. Take the foot out. Let him fall straight down. At any point, I can withdraw and do what I need to with that. Big move. Make this real big because you don't get in close to this person who's bigger and stronger than you. Let's do that and we'll take a 
we'll take a break, get something to eat and drink. So all of that, all of that. So the fourth area, we can only hint at and talk about it a little bit right here, is where you really discover the, the inner lessons. So now, whether it's a chain, or whether it's a stick, or whether it's you uh, wounded and wrestling with one arm, the technique still looks the same. You've got the essence of it. You can make it work. I mean, some people I've talked to over the years say, you know, it even works when I'm not being physical. We've got a very hostile negotiation going on, and all of a sudden it was like I was in the dojo. I did this, and I did that. When I knew they were bluffing me on this, I came in here, and we got what we needed. It wasn't even physical. That's what they said. I believe it really was. Something was out in the air that they knew, right? They knew. And even that doesn't make sense when we talk about it. We can't talk about it. It comes with the package. So hopefully that's something you're looking for too. Okay, how does this go universal to where now whether they're punching at you or wrestling or they've got a chain or they've got a uh, uh, piece of rope, uh, it's all the same. It all feels the same. So we're, we're looking for those inner lessons as well. Uh, during lunch, what might be fun is you go out with a uh, friend, and if you're here by yourself and you don't know anybody, uh, make a friend right away. Just go up to somebody and say, oh, Stephen Hayes said I can go out with you. So, uh, <laughs> and uh, maybe play around with that idea. Okay? What from your own background and your own martial art, what relates to what we were doing? What was different? Okay, what was different? Why was it different, maybe? And where would you take this in the future? It gives you a chance to stay in the training even though you're having a sandwich and a cup of tea or something somewhere. So use that opportunity to explore this fourth level. When we come back, we're going to do a bunch of uh, wild things.